Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Memolytics. Today, I have my very good friend, Lucas, probably one of the most genuine people I've ever met in my life. And uh, what an amazing person we have, or we're lucky to have uh, today. So looking to looking forward to see what we learn from him. But I'll allow, I'll allow him to introduce himself. Lucas, uh, uh, what right now, what projects are you working with? And uh, where do you work? You don't have to specify where you coach as well. But um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, etc. So I'm from Brazil originally, from Sao Paulo. It's like one of the biggest cities um, there. Um, grew up for, for 20 years in Brazil, lived in for 20 years in Brazil, play over there um, at Sao Paulo FC and Palmeiras and Ponte Preta. So Sao Paulo FC and Palmeiras are are like in the first division and Ponte Preta right now is in the second division. Um, that was amazing experience for me. Um, at Ponte Preta was pretty much like in a professional level had already a professional contract, was playing, was happy. And for some reasons, one of them was was two major in injuries on my knee. Um, kind of like God brought me to the States, um, which I, I always had in mind of coming to the United States, getting my education for free. I think this is a this amazing system in the US that works. Um, so came here when I was 20, no English at all, <laughs> just like Portuguese, um, learn English, played the college for four years, um, did my master's in international business at Texas A&M. Um, over that, I became kind of like the GA, uh, kind of graduate assistant coach position for six months. And then finally, um move to California where I start my life with my wife. <laughs> um, and so it's been a good journey uh, over the past year here in California. Met a lot of amazing people. One of them is you, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, during this transition of leaving, of graduating from my master's, I, I realized that I couldn't be away from, from soccer. Um, that was my passion that was in my blood um and then start start just this journey of um getting inside the industry um i always had like the passion of being an agent um this was like for some reasons one of them was I, I grew up in a in a soccer obviously in brazil and the system over there you you can get like as much as the system works for the youth, you can get really bad agents, guys that are just caring about the money, not doing a great job. Um, and even talking to one of my friends over there right now that has a good um, Asian agency that has like over 40 players. Um, he's was He was telling me that there are even drug dealers that are involved in the business right now to wash money and, and represent players over there in South America. So I just wanted to make a difference somehow in the sport. Um, so that makes me um, get inside the industry. And uh, the first um, opportunity that I, I had here in California was coaching. So start coaching a local club. Um, that was a that was okay experience for me. Um, don't agree with a lot of things in in the U.S. soccer system. Um, just the way that players are developing the the tournaments, the things that they they do, the way that they do um things over here. Um, so I'm very similar to you, Memo. I I have to do things. Um, I have to work with things that I'm passionate for. Um, and this wasn't bringing me joy anymore. Um, and then I decided to take a different path. Um, so I had a few connections inside the, the sports agency um, industry. One of them was a, a connection with Rock Nation. Rock Nation is a big sports agency owned by Jay-Z. Um, and spoke to the guy over there. He's the global of like head of soccer. Um he was a nice guy, a guy from the UK. So yeah, let's keep in contact and say, okay, I was knocking at the door of all the other sports agencies too to see if I, if I had opportunity. I, I didn't listen 
back and then I said okay maybe right now is not a good time and then um through a connection of like a random connection I was presenting this non-profit organization that is located in San Juan Capistrano here in California um called Play Higher FC it's established uh non-profit it's been over it's been work uh, functioning already over the past um seven years um right now play higher helps about 500 players um on a monthly basis they having around like five or six training sessions a week so i went over there i saw the method that they do things pretty much like the free play style that we have a lot in brazil in brazil kids play in the streets and and they're just happy and they have i think that when you play free and you play with older players sometimes players that are better than you you get better um and obviously in the u.s the american football and basketball they have a lot of free play style in the communities i think that's why you guys got a lot of good players, but we don't have very much this is, this in, in the youth system. We do have the pay to play, but we don't have a free platform for kids. It's very rare to find. So um fell in love with the nonprofit and then um end up finding out that one of a a player right now that has a he's in a good place called Matthew Hop. Right now he plays for San Jose Earthquakes. He he came from this project and he's been helping a lot of the project to grow. So um sp speaking to the owner of Play Higher, he had the I saw his passion for players, his passion to develop citizens, uh to develop develop humans and develop good athletes, happy, healthy, and players. So um, we connect and then he said, hey, I would love to have you as a director here for the nonprofit. Um, I do have in my heart that I would love to expand this to Brazil um, and start over there. And then also I would love to have an in-house agency, an agency that would work with out of the 500 players, maybe with three or four players that have a potential to reach the top level. Um, I would love to to work with them and, and having somebody representing them. And I said, man, this is perfect. Uh, we match our dreams. Um, and then we, we decided to start an agency called Born to Play. Uh, so Born to Play came out of this, our, our hearts, our, our desire to help players. And then um, currently right now, I'm in the process. I'm 20 days away uh, of taking my, my FIFA test. Um, am I speaking too much? No, no, it was perfect. No, continue. <laughs> so right now I'm, I'm 20 days away from taking my FIFA test. Um, so FIFA like regulated um, the agencies um, recently. They, they came out with a new regulation. And right now, back in the days, you should have a, a, kind of like a license from the confederation that you act in. Um, and that you are operating um, in the case you be U.S. soccer and any the Brazilian confederation too. But right now, FIFA established a, a license that you take it, you pass, and you can act in pretty much any country that is under FIFA. Um, so I've been studying as a, as a 20 multiple choice test, which I will be taking, and then traveling to Brazil to get it started, um, the agency over there. We are already kind of negotiating with the uh, with a few players. Uh, we haven't had anything signed yet, uh, officially representing a player. But I have a few trips scheduled to to see some players and and start signing players finally after I I pass this this exam. So it's very very exciting. It's something that I'm I'm passionate like you, Memo, passionate about the game, passionate about helping players, and yeah, that's the journey. Wow, what an uh, what an amazing intro this was! So many things covered in uh, in a short amount of time. Yeah, so, let me see if I can almost recap it all, uh, if it's if possible. So, originally from Brazil, what a a beautiful football country that is. Um, 
he did have an opportunity to play professionally, but unfortunately injuries got to. Mm-hmm. But you did have the opportunity to come to the States and uh, get your education, which is fantastic because uh, I don't think, I think a lot of U.S. players also take uh, the education system for granted. Mm-hmm. And uh, they don't realize that they're also competing with internationals. Yes, very important. Yeah. Yes. They have yeah. such a, they have a dream to play professionally and their secondary option is to go the college route and then the college route back into professional. But there's there's players all over the world that are probably way better than them. So yeah, they forget to consider. And uh, I think of this this topic like it's I I think maybe back in the days that would be a good option going to college and being drafted. But right now the reality of, of soccer is that uh, so this this was the reality already in Brazil. You know, like in Brazil, if you don't make it to a high level, like when you are 19, 20, that's it pretty much. You know, it's going to be re- very hard for you to, to establish yourself in a top club. You can keep playing, don't get me wrong, in lower level clubs. But like if you don't prove yourself by 20, 21, that's pretty, mu- pretty much the Asian limit. And I think what happened here in the U.S., like a lot of players that have this mentality okay he can be very good he can go play for a ucla he can go play for a top d1 school but once you get to college like first of all like you being you have your full season in the fall right which is like you have your three four months of season and then you don't have a, like a high intensity season the full year so this is is one thing that kind of like it puts you in a place that you're not you're not keeping developing in the way that you should. Um, this the second thing is that you get to know um parties, you get to know alcohol, you know, you get to know the the college life. So all of these kind of like shift your goals, you know, over the years. So I feel like unless it's a player that playing the freshman year plays really well and then goes straight to pro like it's hard to have like three seasons four seasons in college and then go to professional mm-hmm. uh, because of these reasons and uh i think these are my thoughts on this you know like yeah no it's a it's a valid point it's a very valid point because uh nowadays you're now seeing younger and younger players get into the first team mm-hmm. young mm-hmm. as 15 years old I think mm-hmm. Barcelona just had a player play 15 years old. PSG had players playing 15 years old. And yeah. what are what are we seeing in the US? Players at 15 years old still playing uh not to knock them or or their dreams. Yeah. You're playing flight two. You're playing NPL. Yeah. And you and not so, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but yeah. Like it, there's players in these professional academies and you want their spot. They're already, yeah. and then if those guys don't make it, guess who's coming for your uh, college spot? Yeah, 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 exactly. I think that is nice that US have a platform for like flight two, flight three, that players can just keep playing, you know. Mm-hmm. But like, we have to be realistic, you know. If you're not right now in a on academy, right now we see the MLS next. Like, there's a few clubs here and there that do a great job, like developing players in MLS next. Um, but I, I think that more and more players want to, yeah, they want to make make academy. We see players with 16, 17, Harvard, UCLA knocking the doors, but they want to go play academy and, and try to make the first team. So yeah, and uh, the big the the big word that you said, the big the most important one was hey, the reality. You have to be honest with yourself where you're at as a player. Yeah. This will link when we get into our discussion about uh becoming an agent and working with an agent but just as a player yourself being honest with where you are and where you want to go yeah and uh just yeah, being realistic with your goals based on your abilities and and where you currently are mm-hmm. because an agent can only help you so much um and i and i and another valid point that you made was uh the college is probably not the highest level well it could be mm-hmm. it could be because there's a lot of good players playing in college right now, but yeah. how's the league is set up? Yeah, uh, you are not getting one hundred percent from 
every player from every team yeah free match yeah because these players are no longer fresh yeah there's not enough recovery time yeah the fitness begins to decrease because of it and then you get all these injuries and people blame it on bad luck yeah the fixtures are too close together there's too many games during the yeah. week and it's a uh, and it's impossible to for for teams to develop uh to develop their style of play just because of how how compact the schedule is in, yeah. in college. so like you said it's impossible to develop as a player in, in college and they and then we have to remember that they have all the activities right we have to they have the the classes that they have to follow everything else that combines you know it makes the level drop so as much as the college the d1s they have the amazing facilities they have amazing pitches they have amazing like they have a good like sometimes a good trainer that understands about what he's doing but like even that like it's hard because you play a game away on friday and then you play that game home on on on, on sunday and there is no recover and there is if a player is a three-month season pretty much like if a player gets injured he loses like 50 percent of the season so it's it's um yeah it's tough. Yeah, no, especially the higher levels, Division ones, have maintaining your social life, mate, doing well in school, mm -hmm. constant travel on the road, flights. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult to re to recover. You don't probably don't have all the resources as professional teams do, and yeah, the the schedule is absolutely ridiculous. I I completely yeah. agree with you. Um, was um so when you were when you were a player, was coaching always in your in your plans or or was it something that just popped up yeah it wasn't it was it was on my plans to help players somehow it make a difference on uh and in, in sports and soccer but it wasn't on my i i will be honest with you i was never the player like that i i rely a lot on my skills uh like i think i was i was blessed but i was never a player to do extra you know I was never a player that spent like uh, one hour training my left foot, training my cross and taking a one v one, and I think I could have done that. And this that I play a lot on my when I decided like, was okay, I'm gonna coach. Like I said, guys, like I decided to be the guy that make sure that I'm talking about those things that that make the difference, you know. So I'm really like pointing all, all my players. Um, when I was coaching to to make sure like you're doing extra because right now the game is developed um, and there is no much more space like if you're not touching the ball every single day if you're not doing extra like you see guys that already won everything um, in their careers already close to retirement they still doing extra they're still taking care of, her, of, of their bodies so um, I was a case that I had the full potential to reach like professional level, but I never was spending a 30 minutes extra in the gym. You know, I was training my body. I was never doing, so I'll, I'll make sure that right now, even the players that I will be representing, the players that I coached before, like I always mention this because it's so important. It's a sacrifice that you make a couple hours, a sacrifice that it is a big, big, big payoff. So um, if you want to reach that level, especially nowadays with the whole competition doesn't matter here if it's in the u.s if it's europe whatever like you see right now play, uh, teams from uh, let's say morocco you know made the same final in the world cup you see like random teams making far croatia made far again you know um the back in the days like obviously just the skills were were the things that count the most so we we still could could get by, but right now, like you need to do something extra, you know. So yeah, you no know, the a lot of uh a lot of sacrifices need to be made uh from the individual to become a professional nowadays. It's not just enough to be talented and and skillful, yeah. Uh, because someone else is probably just as good as you, or probably even a little bit better. So how are you going to have that competitive edge? How many players are going to choose studying, staying, staying in on a Saturday night 
watching studying their own match film or going to that party and hanging out with yeah. friends. How yeah. many are gonna wake up early, get their stretching routine in, making sure their their body is yeah. is fully recovered, and then uh, maybe like you said, maybe working on their weaker foot. Mm -hmm. uh, like these 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 little things accumulate yeah. and uh, yeah. make and it I yeah makes the complete and I saw cases, man. Like you see, like um, Eder Militão you know, from Real Madrid, like we, we played together and um, you, I was U15, he was U14, but we would train together. He would come and play with us sometimes, but like he would, he wouldn't play. Like he was in a, sometimes not even dressing up for the games, you know, being selected. But you see that guy, like every training session was like, this is the last day that I'm playing soccer, you know? So you see those guys and it want, once they reach, like they, uh, he was always in, like doing something extra or like at least like, you know, being the first one to arrive in the training session or like always choir doing the, doing their job. And once you, once you like, you reach like 16, 17, that you kind of develop, like, you know, you like, sometimes you get 15 players that physically makes a lot of difference, you know, like you get stronger players. So they look better. But it won once he matches up like 17, 18, and you see this guy, like they are a beast. They are beasts, you know, training. Like I was another case, like Diego Carlos. I was talking to him, man. The guy is already 30 years old, you know, and super strong and stuff. He had a major surgery last year that he didn't play for, for so long. And I met with him like a month ago. Uh, for the summer league series here in the U.S. And I gave a hug on him and he was like, he's so strong. He's like a rock, you know? So I hug him. I say, bro, like he's so strong. I said, no, I need, I, I need to do more, you know? Like I need to be like stronger for the season, for the Premier League. Like you have so much games you need to like. So just talking to this guy is the mentality, you know? It, it, at the end of the day, it's here, you know? It's your mentality to get up and go do it. And that that makes the difference. And and guys like, obviously, the talent makes a lot of difference. You know, you need to be born with the talent, obviously. But like, you, if uh, you start early, fourteen, like even early than that, doing something extra, and once you get in the age of like lifting, you do something extra. Then like there is no there is no excuse. Like if you don't, for any reasons like, that can happen in a game that you don't make it to a higher level, but you can lay your head on a pillow at night and say, hey, I do everything that I could, you know? So this is, I think that is the most important that athletes should know. Like I did everything that I could. If I have a goal, I did everything that I could. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. It wasn't my purpose. But like having this, this inside them, you know, coming from inside off, so. Yeah, I completely agree. Like those examples that you gave are, are real examples and even player even at the highest level premier league level these guys are still not satisfied with where they are still grinding yeah and they're still grinding they're still trying to get better because they know there's more players coming in yeah. especially on transfer or, or or through the academy system that and they're getting older yeah so the younger guys might take their place and they don't have a career anymore yeah it's a it's a constantly battle for sure yeah, it's a constant battle. Your job is never safe in the professional world. And yeah, yeah it's very uh and it's important to, for players to also understand that that uh getting bigger, stronger shouldn't be an objective within itself. Mm -hmm. uh, because then some people might take that literally, which is a uh, uh, a scary thought because I know it's not what we mean when we yeah. talk about hey, you gotta go to the gym and get stronger, so then they build so yeah. much muscle and then they get slower and now they can't perform the same uh, actions they would in the game. Mm -hmm. So I think lifting or strength training is just a, a tool or a precondition that allows you to stay on the pitch for longer. Mm -hmm. It's almost like injury prevention. Yeah, exactly. So doing everything you can to, to, to keep your body healthy and stay on the pitch. So, so you can important. more. Exactly, because the players they have to play. You know, if you're not playing, like 
if you are on a contract and you're not playing, like you shouldn't be worried. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are in a college, you're not playing, you shouldn't be worried. Like you might lose your scholarship. You never know. I've seen cases like that. Mm -hmm. So like, um, you need to work before that happen. You need to do the prevention, do whatever you can, you know, and to be physically able to mentally and physically able to to support the whole the whole season, the whole stress of the season that that takes it. Um. And then just perform, you know, because it's all about that. Like being an agent, as you said before, like you, I can help my player until certain point, you know. But once you he jumps on a on a pitch, like it, it's about how much he wants. It's about him, you mm -hmm. know. So I can help. The I can give the guidance. I can give the resources. I can give like the knowledge. I can help, but like it, it depends on him, you know. If he if it's a player that is playing in the Sao Paulo Academy, okay, what's your goal to get to Europe? Okay, how much do you want to get there? You know, what are you going to do extra? When you get to Europe, how much do you want to be selected to the national team? You know, how much do you want? You know, so working with your goals and they're re realistic goals, obviously, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. And I definitely want to touch on that um, because that's all that's, part of being an agent and working with an agent. I definitely want to touch on that, that goal planning and that how you structure uh, this player's trajectory or pathway to, to eventually reaching their dreams. Um, well, I, I want to quickly circle back around um, you finding your passion for becoming an agent. Can you speak a little bit more about that? I know you, you spoke about um, having friends in Brazil and that probably got um got done wrong by an agent. Yeah. That people with people with bad intentions, mm -hmm. people getting into this industry that's supposed to help people, but coming in with bad intentions. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like um my testimony was pretty much like I was the the biggest impact and experience that I had in my life. It was one when, when I was an U seventeen for Palmeiras, um, and I was a midfielder. I used to play like a ten in Brazil, and my two strikers, um, number eleven, uh, was a guy called Gabriel Jesus. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and then and then number nine it was a guy called um João Marcos, and his nickname was Chininho. So Tininho was an amazing player, better than Gabriel Jesus, and I can testify that at, at that age. So obviously Gabriel Jesus already had an agent, was very well represented, um, had amazing guidance, had a good family too. And in the other side of the coin, we had um Tininho. Tininho was a um a good player, but very very bad represented. It was represented by an agent that just cared about the money, just cared about the commission that he was making monthly there um, through Tininho's salary and how much he was going to make when Tininho was, was sell. And he was not caring about Tininho on a daily basis. So it ended up that Tininho had a really bad family and the agent a lot of times has to do a role of a family. Um, so... He was involved with, uh, he was from a poor community in Sao Paulo. And then he was involved with uh, bad things in the community. He was involved with drug dealing and he was involved with um, robbery too. So he got arrested one time. Uh, his parents lost uh, his legal guard. Uh, and then the club Palmeiras became his legal guardian. So... That happened one time and Tinyu came back. He was training. Then how much he was good. Even involved with bad stuff, Palmeiras still believed in him because he was just so good. So he kept playing, he kept playing. And at a certain point, Tinyu disappears again. And then long story short, we end up finding out that Tinyu, before like Christmas Day, he was involved and in, uh, he was trying to hijack a car with his other friends. And he got on a gunfight with the cops and ended up getting shot and that. Wow. Um, so this was like, uh, I remember being the team and said, guy, we just lost a teammate to like this, you know, this is crazy. And, and then like, I even felt like kind of blame, you know, of 
like I, sh I should have done something. I should help him somehow. But like I wasn't aware of everything was going on pretty much. Like that was very, very deep like this. And I was only 17 years old. You know, I didn't have this was 10 years ago. So um, that was the first impact on my life. And then um, I had all other bad, a bad experience with agencies and trying to like ask me for money to pay directors under the table. You know, um, I had experience of an agent saying like, hey, I left when I left Ponte Preta um, and I was between like either playing, keep playing or coming to the United States. I had an agent saying like, hey, um, everything's like I really like you and stuff. Everything's set. You're going to travel to Grêmio, right? Grêmio is a club in the south of Brazil. It's a club that Ronaldinho came from. So he said like, you're going to go for, uh, to on a tryout with Grêmio on Tuesday. I said, okay, it was like Friday probably. So, okay, great. And then when he got to like Monday and stuff, like I start texting him, you couldn't find it. The Asian were anywhere that you could be found you know so never gave me an airplane ticket or like that was the deal airplane ticket or like a financial help or nothing it disappeared so he frustrated me a lot you know um so those are other small experience that i i saw and i saw in other players too to happen um recently speaking to one of my friends friends that have a agency over there with over like 40 players um he said that he lost a, a contract of representation to a drug dealer. Um, so he was very interested on this kid that plays for Santos FC. And then um, he had a meeting with the guy. It was great. But then the next week, there was a drug dealer that approached the, the kid and said, hey, I want to represent you. And I will pay you 10,000 um, reais, which is the currency over there in Brazil, um, which is like equivalent to $2,000 a month for you to represent you and probably a way to wash money too you know from from drugs so it's just like all this sort of stuff i said this is crazy you know the industry there's a lot of as as much as the money is increasing the bad things are increasing you know in the industry i want to make sure to to be a tool uh, for players and, and be out there in this game to to fight for the players so um so that's it, man. This is my passion, and this is how I decided. And and it's a, it's a crazy story, but it's a it's a funny story at the same time. So. Yeah, that's a, I, I that that just blows me away. Just mm -hmm. uh, hearing how your your own experience has driven you to this moment in your life, even if it was ten years ago, and yeah. I, that's always sticking in your memory. And the the big things that stuck out for me were you can be the best player. Like the example you gave, you could be the best player, but uh, you could have bad representation and not make it. Yeah. You can be a good player, not the most elite one out of the two or in the group, but your agent could be so good and he gets you in the door. Yeah. And I, I think um, that's just a big eye opener because we always think, uh, oh, yeah, if I'm good enough, I'm going to get the opportunity. No, you need you also need someone to get you in the door. And uh, if, if you don't have that person, then uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to get to that next step or even uh, go after your dreams. Yeah, you do need help. Some people will try to do it alone, but yeah. It's and and if you're able to do it, fantastic. But yeah, you need help sometimes. Yeah, I feel in the U.S. like there is even talk recently talking to a few players like out there. Any CAA has a rule which is like I completely don't agree with that. But if you receive any sort of representation on a verbal or I think it's a verb verbal is not but on a reading contract like you lose the eligibility. Mm. um to play so players this the system here is a little bit different like players they are um let's say 16 17 they still don't want the representation because they want to make sure that hey i secure a contract for us in the club 
I'm not playing college. That's my road that I'm going to follow. And then I need the representation, which is like, I don't agree because I see like a lot of players over there in Brazil that are already like 15. Obviously, the only road over there is to pro in Brazil. There is no college leagues and stuff. So obviously, I need an Asian already right away. And and I need a, a, some sort of representation. But you see those guys are already monetizing, you know, some kids that are already 15, they have contracts with Nike, they have like 30, 40,000 of followers on Instagram, you know, like obviously soccer is bigger over there, there's more funds and stuff, but like either way, like they are being represented in a way that the Asian scenes are already building their image, you know, um, they may be securing like endorsements of like contract of endorsements of like Nike, Adidas and any other like sponsors that they can get. Um, and while in the in US, you see like a lot of this happening in football, you know, football, you see those players already, especially right now, because kind of players can get paid uh, and, and division one. I don't, I'm not sure in division two, division two, too. For, to get paid? Yeah. Not quite sure. I got to gotta look into that. But I yeah. think I think it's just oh in the NCAA in general. Yeah, in general, right? Yeah. Um. So they you've seen football like players with thirty, forty, I can thousand followers already, and they like they're not pro yet, you know. But they already there is an agency maybe like taking care of their marketing and stuff, and and all of this counts, you know. Like obviously the field is so important, you know. And if you can make it by yourself, but it's hard, you know. You need somebody that um has experience inside the game you know like a, a some some person to intermediary uh the negotiations between the club between like the family that doesn't have um knowledge you know like if uh, most of the parents here they they never play you know the game so like you sitting down and talk to the director of a club you don't have experience to deal with it you know mm -hmm. so it's 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 a better way to have somebody that you trust to be in between the club, in between the player, and, and helping all this journey, and, and and helping as a mentor too, you know, like you, you had a bad day, pick up your phone and call your agent, you know, and say you need somebody to motivate you. Sometimes you need somebody to give you advice, so it's a twenty four hour job, you know, pretty much like you don't, but it's something that it's 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 fundamental, and, you, and this is the history of all the players, all the top players. You know, they always had somebody important helping them to get there behind. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's another thing that stuck to me when you were pre speaking previously. But uh, just real quick, yeah, some players are are fearful of losing their amateur status mm -hmm. um, if they do decide to go with an agent, and then. So now they don't go all in. Yeah. They want to take the gamble. And then um they they also oh, losing my train of thought here. So when they have this, they have their amateur status, and then now they risk they risk not being able to to play college. Oh, there's the pop-up now. When the when a player is sold in the US, clubs cannot benefit from that, like in no. Europe or Brazil. Um this this is a big point. Uh it which is interesting to me because mm -hmm. when we talk about youth football and maybe it could help the pay to play system too. And I know there's always been constant debate about this topic that because what is the incentive? for coaches to let go of their best player and move them yeah. on to their team. Yeah. And then eventually they develop and they get sold. And then obviously how it works uh, around the world, everywhere else where they, the clubs that worked with the player prior, they get a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. this doesn't happen. Yeah. This doesn't happen. And this is not a, this is not an incentive even for coaches, you know, why I'm going to develop and put all my efforts, you know, if, this money is not being generated to the institution that I'm I'm part of. So recently players that left like local clubs here went to academies and I, you see like, like, for example, there was a player that left a local club here, went to Colorado Rapids, right? Um, but LAFC had like uh, the rights for him, 
-hmm. because he played there like for six months, like when he was U12 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then Galaxy and LAFC had their name, his name on the list. And then for him to go to Colorado Rapids, Rapids had to pay like a mouth to LAFC, you know, which is like this player wasn't played for LAFC in the past four years, you know. Mm -hmm. And the local club that was developing him, that made him to reach the level that he is right now, didn't receive one penny, you know? So, like, this is crazy. And and this is, like, the system is just, like, why are you doing this, you know? Like, it doesn't make any sense, so. Yeah, because um, that, that percentage could potentially help smaller clubs in the U.S., build better facilities for their players. A hundred percent. Motivate them to do a better job. A hundred percent. Bring in better coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, inspire, inspire those kids. Inspire those kids. Is that the, exactly. Like, um, I remember Lucas Moura when I was in academy, he was sold to PSG um, for like, I don't remember the amount, but I remember that the amount that he was sold it would cover like five years of expenses of the of the academy in Brazil. So I'm talking about five years of expenses that would take care of like out like 200 players that were living in the training ground, you know, for five years. So like the clubs benefit from this, you know, um, and this, this is the system that works. If you do things right, it works, you know. And it takes one player sometimes, one player, you know, to put you in the in the spot. Like, so it's just frustrating that the system here is not here. And it's about the business. The MLS, no relegation, no promotion. You pay 400 million. You are, even if your, your club doesn't have any story, you're already in front of like clubs, like let's say Orange County, OCFC, like the local US club, uh, USL clubs that are playing. There are maybe 10 years, already 15 years in a game. But you, you come and you play 400 million, you buy a franchise in MLS and you're there, you know. So you have clubs like Nashville that just started already in the final, you know. So this is just like, it's frustrating, very frustrating. Yeah, it's kind of like the sad story that just recently happened with the San Diego Loyal and the new San Diego franchise. Exactly. Franchise. So now we don't have, now we lose one very nice football club who's already established themselves in the community. Yeah. And then now they can't uh compete with the So what happened with them exactly? I guess uh they tried to get MLS status. Uh-huh. They didn't get it and then someone else came with a with the money to make a franchise in San Diego and I guess the owner looked at their financials and said they couldn't uh they couldn't uh, financially survive. So, because they lost so much money during COVID as well, uh -huh. they were just pumping money in to, to keep the club there because it means something to the community. Yeah, yeah. But now with the new franchise, you know, people are going to go there and probably not there. Yeah. So, San, Die uh, San Diego is having a franchise from MLS. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see. And this franchise already will compete with, like, Orlando City. Like, teams that are more, like, longer in the game and... Yeah, it's just you buy your way you win. Is sports shouldn't be like this, you know? Yeah, you lose yeah. you lose the essence of sports, like. Mm -hmm. And there's no there's no give back like we talked about. There's no uh, reward, yeah. like that that club that made that player fall in love with the game, and now they're a professional. Exactly. Reward. No reward. Not saying that um the satisfaction is not rewarding, but I mean money does help grow the club because maybe that club did something special yeah that's unique and maybe they could produce five six more players but they can't because financially they're not able to do it yeah yeah even even teams like galaxy you know you don't see development you don't see any player that came from galaxy and became you know so like it's just this system that goes over and over and over and again that is like when if it doesn't change it and like even if you think about other sports like the olympics right the oldest event of sports in the whole world imagine if the play there's a whole system for you to get there's so many tournaments that you have to play so many like if you were a track and field like 
athlete like you need to reach so many like goals in your local community to go national and then to go like be selected to the olympics but imagine if it was a way to buy in you know like you you lose the whole thing the whole magic of the olympics so that's what mls does and it, that's very unfortunate mm -hmm. agreed another thing that stuck out to me was uh the agent has to play the sometimes has to play a role as the player's family mm -hmm. which is uh crazy um because especially in brazil in places like the favelas we probably a lot of people have probably seen images or videos of what it's like to even live there and players not having that support system behind them and their agent is all they have and that, that happens yeah and that stuck to me because you need someone to to maybe vent to if you're having a bad day or inspire yeah. you, mentor you maybe yeah you you just need somebody there because it could be so stressful a hundred percent and sometimes you only have your dad but your dad doesn't know about the game you know and your dad is your dad you know sometimes like it's hard to have a conversation mm -hmm. uh, with him um for for some reason so like you have somebody that is maybe outside your family that understands about you and they can pour into your life with the knowledge you experience and, and then help in those moments is fundamental. So mm -hmm. it changes, it changes the course of many um, athletes and many careers. If you do have somebody uh, like this. So. Absolutely. So can you, can you just tell us a little bit about the, the process of, of becoming an agent? What are the steps uh, that that you've taken, or and that there are, to and how maybe how long this process, uh, does yeah, take? yeah, hundred percent. Like so, it's it's very simple right now with the new regulation from FIFA. When I like I mentioned before, it's a it's a task that will be um it happens twice a year right now. Uh, I think the very first one was in April, and we have one right now in September. So I'll be traveling. I mean, studying. FIFA have pretty much um, an ebook that you get from six hundred pages, all the sort of regulations be between like dispute of players and between um, um, regulations between like um, confederation regulations between the status of uh, transfer on on players between status of transfer on loans. Um, all of this um, that you have to study. And then they put together this 20 multiple choice tests uh, that will be hosted in Chicago. So unfortunately, like I have to travel to Chicago to take the test in the U.S. Um, Soccer Confederation over there. Um, and then I've been studying for that over the past like two months, two months and a half um, to take it. And once you take it, um, there's a fee for that. You pay the fee. And once you get your license, you pay an annual fee. Um, and you have to follow a few compliances every every single year um, to keep this this license. And then after the license, pretty much you were allowed to engage in any sort of negotiation between players, clubs. And, and yeah, so obviously you can act representing a club. Um, you can act representing the, the client. Um, the player you can act representing the engaging club if it's a it's a club that is buying another player so there's different types of transfers that you can act if you if you do hold a license mm -hmm. but it's, it's very very simple like i think back in the days you, you should have more compliance and then obviously if every transaction that you have between a player if you're selling it or like any sort of like deal that you have with the player you have to report this on a FIFA platform mm -hmm. um, for agents so they can they can keep a track and in, in the compliance of this. So interesting. Are there any um prerequisites that, that you need or can just anyone become an agent? Do you have to have like a college anyone, degree or anything? No, no, anyone that's a good question. Anyone that wants to be an agent is just pretty much you don't have to show any sort of financial stability any sort of like um degree or nothing like this you just do have to follow with the fifa compliance and and acquire this this license with fifa yeah interesting well thank you for that and um i think the 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 biggest question now is um what is it like 
And I think you already gave us some insight what it's like working as an agent, being that mentor for a player. What is the most difficult part of being an agent? Because you already give us a lot of good information and what you kind of do as an agent. But yeah, what is what for you? What is the most difficult part? I think the most difficult part is like, again, you deal with the whole all the areas of a player. You know, it's not only like getting in front of a a director. There are a lot of agencies that they do um just pretty much they treat their athletes as a business transaction. You know. So I do know players that are represented by those big agencies that they never met the agents, you know, just over the phone, which is like, it blows my mind. So um, just like building this personal relationship, you know, with the player, like sometimes like you, you're going to have cases that you're already been following the player for a while, you know, until you have engaged in a contract of, of representation. But there will be cases that, Boom, you just met the player, you know, you need to understand the player's needs. You need to understand the family needs, you know, you need to understand the player's goals, what he wants, you know, um, and and just have this this relationship of like understanding it in a full cycle, you know, on the field, off the field, and and taking a full assessment of it and, and knowing how to deal the best way, you know, like there was kids in Brazil, they will have different needs than kids here in the U.S., mm -hmm. you know. So having this um, this knowledge of, like, separating things and knowing what's best for each, I think is the most challenging thing um, of acting as an agent, yeah. So you're basically having to, based on the player, adapt who you are or adapt what you're able to offer to best mm -hmm. fit their needs. Because it's not a, as an agent, it's not a one size fits all model. This is what yeah. I see, and this is what I'm going to offer you, and this is just yeah. transactional. But now you you to be a very good agent, you need to adapt yourself to the player. Exactly. Like what... Exactly. It's not um, especially in the beginning. In the small agencies like this, you know, like you do have to need like, a like keep the, the relationship in a way that you always there for him, you know, um, no matter what, always being transparent and, and knowing, like, as you said, like, it's not a, a math, you know, like a, a one plus one is like two, you know, and it's going to work with all the players. No, it's, it's different needs, different backgrounds, you know, um, a kid that, came from a background here in OC and made an academy over here, has a different need than a kid that is coming from a favela over there in Brazil that didn't have what to eat, you know, on the table. So taking the assessment and know what's best for each is, I think is the most challenging thing. And and knowing like how to adapt, like as, as you said, like um, there will be so many different cases and that when you look at a player, you're not looking him on the field only, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at his family situation, you know, how he deals with the coach, you know, how he, uh, if he need any sort of support, you know, like in Brazil, probably he needs a financial support, he needs some, anything. So all of this, and I think through our nonprofit over there in Brazil, we have the whole platform to help the player kind of like succeed in all the areas, you know, we do want to implement ESL English as a second language for, for the players over there in the youth. We do want to um, have a, a team or like other corporate that can come into the nonprofit and teach them how like financial, you know, educate them financially. Like we get players in Brazil that they, they sign a contract in the first year uh, of when they turn 16, they can sign the first professional contract and they receive like, let's say a hundred thousand dollars as a bonus. You know, that's, that's what they receive usually when they sign the first contract over there. So understanding that the player is not going to go and buy like a $50,000 car, you know, there is no need for that. You know, like invest your money in something else, get a good car, but like, you know, until you make a level to like, hey, you fully established, you have a contract for five years, winning that much, you know. 
So those kind of things that is so important that that's where, especially when a lot of money start coming in on those players, they lose they lose the track of it, you know. So, um, if they don't have a good family, they they will need our support very much. So, yeah. It's a, it's a lot of uh, a lot on your plate. You're putting uh, a lot of almost you're taking the pressure away from the player. That yes. way they can focus on. On playing, yeah. Just playing. So that's that's incredible. And um now I want to shift almost the perspective a little bit to the eyes or to the pers- yeah, to the perspective of the player. Or even keep your perspective too and maybe go back and forth. Like and you already gave some insight what it's like working with an agent. Mm-hmm. So what is like the the day to day or week to week uh interaction? look like for a player with an agent or even how do you start by working with an agent yeah so there's different ways to approach like obviously as i mentioned like we we are in the start of like launching officially and bringing players signing players but there is there's ways like the obviously you can scout a player and and approach the family and say Mm -hmm. scout the player take a full assessment and say hey I, i would like to work with you you know um and sometimes there is other agencies in a, in a in a game and you have to negotiate you know you have to show your value why why your agency is so important why the player should work with you instead of the other agency um so kind of like any other market you know of of like competition um and then like i don't ha- obviously I, I haven't been representing players yet but i was represented by agents agents back in the day so he was he would like follow up with me you know, like, and that's the pen of the agents, you know, like, again, there's agencies that see the, talk to the players, like, every six months, you know, which is, which is crazy, so, um, the way that I, I, I want to work is, like, follow up with the player every week, you know, making sure that everything's fine, like, once in a while, going, check it out on him in person, you know, if he's in a different state, like, just going, being, being a support, um, you need to follow up on matches too, you know, uh, go watch them, making sure that they're performing well, making sure that you keep the relationship with the club, sometimes with the coach, you know, um, coaches, sometimes they talk with agent, agents too and, and keeping a relationship with that director of the clubs. Um, so doing the, the, I would say, I would define that doing like the midfield, you know, <laughs> on a game, like the doing the midfield, doing the connection, between all those parties and 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 making sure that things are are, are doing are doing great and and like the the, the kid is especially a youth player you know that he's only focused on on playing you know on on making sure that he reaches his goals and sitting down with the player putting the milestones okay what do you want to reach what's the time that you want to reach this you know what are you doing what's the resources you know what do you do Memo is so important to the video analysis you know, with the players. This is something that like a lot of agencies are being implementing, implementing with their players, and it's so important. Um, so yeah, that's that's the day day to day. I would say, uh, just making sure you kind of like the old brother, you know, a lot of times of a player. Yeah, no, fantastic. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure as an agent, uh, because you also have a reputation just like the player and you have to be selective with the players that you work with. Uh, What, what do you look for uh, in a player as you're, as you're thinking about representing them? Uh, I think his attitude on and off the field, how he deals with like, if he, if he sub, you know, um, how he deals with that, how he deal with, with his teammates his attitude inside the pitch, you know, if it's positive, if it's not, you know, um, like how much like he cares about the off the field, you know, sometimes you got those players that care more off the field, how they look and stuff to how they playing, you know, um, making sure that his vision is aligned with our values at our, our born to play with our agency, what we believe to be, um, a good athlete that fit us, you know, um, and how his family is, you know, how his family, if his family is supportive, his family is not, 
um, if you want to deal with the family too, because you're dealing with the family, um, um, how he, how much interest he wants, um, how much, how much he wants to work with us, you know, like, does he truly believe in us as we believe in him? Um, so all these assessments, when you see a player that you like, you put it on the table, you know, and that's like a final decision to, Hey, I want to work with him or I do not want to work with him, you know? So it's not about like just being good on the field or being like, you know, you need to show that you match uh, with their values. So I think that's the most important thing. I think that's incredible for, for an agency to have, or even any organization to have um, because, you know, agencies could just sign good players and not care about the values or any morals or ethics behind anything. They just want to get a player that's top and is going to make the money. Um, so this, I would, I would love to hear more about the the agency that you're, that you're working with uh, born to play and uh, what, what your values are and, um, and also like the process in, in terms of getting players, uh, how do you get them started? How many agents are there? And uh, how, is it a group decision to represent a player or an individual decision to represent a player? So it's a lot of questions, but. Yeah. So right now we, we have um, like, as I said, like I'm, we depending off, we want to do things right. So there is the, the license kind of in between um uh, so once that happens um we you are already talking to a few players um we haven't signed anything because of that mm -hmm. we're already engaging players on on a few presentations so we pretty much you get in front of the players we present our values um we present um why they should believe in us why the family shouldn't believe in us um very much like sales pretty much you know you sell um why they should trust in you like my personal experience you know you have a lot of agencies that that never played the game you know there were probably like businessmen they understand about the transaction but they don't they don't speak the same language with the player mm -hmm. you know so this is something that makes ourselves to like more personal agency that we the agency was found by myself and another um uh, business partner that runs the nonprofit and, and had the dream of starting an agency. He played in Germany as well. So he played the college, he played professional over there. He has understanding, he has a passion for players. So us two combining like what we bring to the life of a player, um, not only the services that we'll provide, but how much you're going to pour into knowledge, into support for them. Um, so going like i have a trip for example soon to denver which you, i will i will look in a uh, player that we we interested in signing him um the dad is going to be there i'm going to have a talk to the dad um a player that we believe so much and we want to make sure that we we secure him because it's a uh, we I would say it's a gamble. I wouldn't not say it's a gamble because we believe in him so much and we know that we trust on him. Um, but it's pretty much like okay, like we we're gonna start pouring into your lives of all the service that we're providing to you. Like the athlete is not a reality, yeah. The athlete doesn't have a contract, yeah. He's just playing for the academy. Uh his first year over there, but um we want to make sure we start working with him right away um because he's a he's a player that we're really looking for a while like my business partner knows him for for over five years so saw his full development to his 17 right now so those cases is like it's just like having the fam educating the family that's very important and and educating why having an agent why um why why we're gonna help him to get there why it's so important to have somebody in between the family in the club why like explaining everything that we provide and pretty much like start working with him i i, I think that that's pretty much it there's no much magic you know on that so yeah but so just uh, uh creating that relationship and adding showing that you can add value into their lives not yeah. just not just for their dreams but as a person in general hol holistically 
It's incredible. Holistic. Yeah. The whole, the whole, the whole person. And uh, you take everyone who, who's in their family and whoever they know, their friends and everyone, because that also makes up who the player is, who they hang out with. You're also taking them on board. Yeah. You know? So this is incredible information. And it's probably information that uh, a lot of people have never heard before. So you yourself have, have added value to everyone who's watching right now. So I greatly you. appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy man, but uh, uh -huh. I appreciate you too. Time. You too, man. Well, I, I, I really love to spend time with people that love the game like you do. And I know that you're going to help so many people, so many players with your passion. And I know that, I mean, I believe a lot in God. I know that God has something special prepared for you. And I want to make sure that I we help each other on this journey because one mind, like um, two minds is better than one mind thinking together. And I know that we can, if you build a team like this, people that want to help the players, that want to kind of break the system of just like, you know, money, money, money maker and, and kind of do something special in the game here in this country that is growing. Um, I want to be surrounded with those kind of people. And I really appreciate it. I put a lot of faith on, on, on what you're doing too. Um, you're putting your heart on this. So I always will love to spend time with, with you with you, and, and I'll be here. So and whoever is watching this, the, the podcast, uh, if and if it's like one in one hour that we talk, one single thing that it was like valuable that we, we were able to give information and stuff. Like I, I truly believe that education like changed lives. And and like if you educate about the industry that you are and the dreams that you're pursuing, like it's it, it helped you change your life. So absolutely. And that's the whole point is to share knowledge and for the ones that want to learn and get something out of it and even take the time to listen to our full conversation the the fact that if someone is able to get one thing out of it that's already adding value to someone's life like and that. that's 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 um it's almost like a gift uh that that that's nice to hand out to people and obviously um this interaction between me and you was absolutely incredible and gives a lot of value to me uh hearing you speak and hearing all the positive things that you're doing. So it's very exciting the 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 path that you're going on. It's gonna be very fun to keep track of you and uh, see how 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 successful you're gonna become. And I truly believe that you will be very successful in what you do. And then Thank hopefully you. even we uh we do a little partnership on the pitch. Yes, yes, that would be amazing. But yeah, absolutely, Lucas. Well, final question. How is this conversation for you? It was amazing. Love to share my thoughts, information with somebody that loves the game and whoever is watching, spending their time to watch this. I love it. Uh, I will keep doing as much as I can. Fantastic. Well, hopefully we could have you back on again, discuss the differences between Brazil and uh, and football here in the U.S. So. Amen. Amen. With all the players on board, I'm ready from born to play. That would be awesome. Let's go. Uh, and send me, send me the links to both and uh, I will... I would add them in the description and to everything, uh, to every, every social media I, I'm going to post on. And, awesome. uh, and that way we, we continue to share and, and, um, give you the exposure that you, you deserve because you do a lot of incredible work and you work very hard. So you deserve it. Thank you, Thank you too. Appreciate it. All right, Lucas, have a great right, rest of the day, man. You too, man. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao.